Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams, and it is a privilege today to get to visit on the summit with the head football coach for the Northwestern Red Raiders, Coach Matt McCarty, in his sixth season, or heading in heading into his sixth season as the head coach of the Red Raiders here coming into 2021. And coach, before we get too much into looking ahead, we have to look back just a little bit because you had a national runner-up season in 2020, a fantastic year, 11-2 and two overall, an 11-game winning streak, by the way, which means the season was bookended, probably with a couple of tough losses along the way. You played in more games than anyone else did in 2020. But, Coach, congratulations on a great year. Thank you. It, it was an awesome year, and it was, it was a special season uh, just to share with uh, the players and the, the staff that we have. And, you know, it was such a unique year in, in so many aspects from going back to the spring before that and, you know, the playing the regular season in the fall and the postseason in the spring and then the differences from a normal year that last year had. It really was a special run and uh, just so happy for our guys and our upperclassmen especially um, just to see all the work that they've put in to see it pay off with that run to the championship was pretty special. Well, Coach, the, the Northwestern brand is a solid brand, and and uh, watching the Red Raiders play, I know that that you recruit outside of the, the state lines of Iowa. You have a number of players on your roster from, from all over, and, and people know who the Red Raiders are, so that's not a secret. However, you know, uh, along the way, yeah, during that playoff run that you talked about, you, you took down the two top-ranked teams in the country at the time, and both of them happened to be in-state teams. So I, I have to ask you, how big or how nice is it, uh, even for recruiting purposes or otherwise, to get wins like that along the way? Those are those are really big wins and, and for our program and, and in that postseason run last year. And there's great football in the state of Iowa. And, and for small schools, you know, recruiting locally is so important for us. And we, we'd never matched up on the football field with Grandview before. And so that was our first opportunity to, to play them. And that was a, a great ball game. And, you know, we were able to make a few plays at the end and come away with a win. And then uh, then the following week, the same thing, you know, just another really awesome win uh, against Morningside. And, yeah, to, to beat those two teams and, and to really be the team that came out of the state of Iowa last spring it was pretty special. and It's been great for our program and recruiting. And just recruiting locally is so important for us. Well, you have a, a number of players coming back from last year's national runner-up team and, and quality on both sides of the ball. We won't, we're going to start with offense, though. You lose Shane Solberg from last year's team. Of course, uh, anyone that's a Northwestern fan is is not going to be forgetting his name anytime soon, though. But, but you have a number of players stepping in. Michael Story, who came away with the catch against Morningside, and so he's making a name for himself in that. And uh, Tyson Coima, scheduled to be back on the roster as well. And that's one of those uh, it's one of those things. When you have a player like that, uh, even showing up in a roster, even, even showing up with his uniform on at game time, I'm sure goes a long way toward the morale of the team. It really does. And, you know, we've, we've been so blessed and so fortunate to have uh, you know, players like Tyson Coima and Shane Solberg the past four years, and, and those two have left their mark uh, on our program. And uh, it's going to be really difficult to replace Shane and, and his production. And he, he's such an outstanding leader for us. And, and that piece was, you know, just as strong as, as the, the piece that he put out on the football field. Um, but, yeah, we have some great weapons uh, yet offensively. With Michael Story, you mentioned, you know, Mike is somebody that is just an outstanding competitor. And Mike, Mike always finds ways to impact the football game. And uh, we feel like we have some other really good weapons at receiver. Cade Mosier, uh, we feel like is just a dynamic threat at receiver and set a school record with 300 yards receiving in our national semifinal game. And, and Cade's a pretty special player, and we're really excited to have him, for him to have a big year this year. And, yeah, Tyson being back, it's when he's on the field, and he just brings such a presence to our team. And he started over, you know, close to 50 games in his career. And, He's been so productive, and he, he's a kid that just finds a way to get things done. And he's such a competitor, and you know, he it's it def, definitely raises the spirits of the team when he's out there. As we feel like we have a chance to beat anybody if he's on the field. We're speaking now with Matt McCarty in his sixth season at head as the head coach at Northwestern, uh, more than a decade, by the way, on the sidelines there as a coach with the staff, and it's your alma mater as well, and. Coach, if we're going to speak about your alma mater, let's go ahead and, and talk about something. When when I look up 
uh, what you all are doing from time to time and, of course, week to week during the football season. At the top of the website, it talks about Northwestern, and the tagline is Honoring Christ Through Excellence in Athletics. I think that uh, you guys, at least uh, w- well, speaking to the football team right now, you've been doing your part with the excellence in athletics. How are you honoring Christ, and what does that mean to you? That, that's so important to us, and, and we want to be genuine uh, in everything that we're doing with our teams. And, and we, we talk about honoring Christ through excellence, and, and we talk about excellence as honoring God with our, our best. And it's not just in football. We want to honor God with our best in everything that we're doing and it carries over to athletics and and how our young men carry themselves on campus and it's such a it's so much more than just football and football is a really you know important piece of their experience but football is not everything uh in terms of their experience at northwestern and i had an outstanding experience as a student athlete at northwestern and, and i loved my experience here and it's really really important for me now as head coach to just ensure that our guys and the people involved in our program, you know, have an awesome experience as well. And, and we want to meet all of our players where they're at and just help them grow and, and honor God with their best and whatever that looks like. And we talk a lot about, um, yeah, every, everybody's best is a little bit different, uh, but we want to pursue our best and, and, and do our best every single day and, and just continue to pursue excellence every day and all that we do. Well, coach, we talked about the offense and, and I think, and this is just an observation, you know, with a, a, a tough conference like the GPAC and it's, and it's uh, been tough and it seems like it gets tougher all the time. I'm sure you, <laughs> you probably deal with that looking at all the film that you have to look at from week to week, but the offensive numbers that, that are put out from the GPAC and I think even across the Midwest as well and in NAI, they're, they're always so big and so daunting. Uh, Koima and, and, and your offensive group's done a pretty good job of, of uh, inflating those numbers too. When you talk about that, though, does does your defense seem to get underappreciated? And and by the way, I'm I'm old enough I should not be uh, dealing with recent history bias, but I'm going to do it anyway. You don't have to go back very far to talk about Northwestern's defense. Go back to that Morningside game, and you talk about the catch and all that. That defense held near the end when you all were down five points, and, and the defense held against a very strong Morningside team, and. Uh, do you feel like the defense gets underappreciated sometimes? You know, I think everybody, when you watch football and especially college football these days, you know, it is such an offensive game and it is so important for me as, uh, as a head coach who was a defensive coordinator before, um, I, I, you definitely value the, the ability to, to put up points offensively. And, and that is so important in, in today's college football game. You have to be dynamic offensively. Uh, to, to really compete at a high level. And that, that definitely helps defensively. You know, it allows if your offense is able to put up some points, it, it helps the defense play a little bit more aggressive, play a little bit more free. And, you know, our, our two sides of the football, I think, complement each other really well. Um, th- those guys support each other and compete really hard with one another every day in practice. And, yeah, our, our defense made some huge stops. You know, throughout the postseason, our defense, I, I thought, played really well in the run-up to the championship and and Morningside game was one of those it was it was a game of attrition it was it was a really tough back and forth game it was hot we had we had guys in different positions in the fourth quarter and you know it was a battle of of just who could finish that game And and our guys competed really hard for 60 minutes and defense made two fourth and one stops in the fourth quarter and and scored a touchdown uh defensively in the second half And, and that was really huge to just give our offense uh, an opportunity to get the ball back and win the game for us. It's a, it's a quality defense, but it's a quality team overall. And we're pushing toward 2021 now. And you look at then at the the schedule that, that you all have in front of you, and I hope that you get to play all the games throughout this entire season. But you look at that schedule, and, and it starts on August 28th out of conference, taking on presentation. You have a couple of tough – GPAC opponents in obviously Morningside's going to be tough every year. Dort really a program that that is is on the rise right now. You get those two teams back to back weeks near the end of the schedule. Both of them though in Orange City. Can you talk about your your twenty one schedule? Yeah, it's it's going to be a, a you know a long season for us in terms of we do have you know 11, 11 games and a non conference game and we had Mount Marty as a conference game and. It's a full schedule, and it's it's one of those where in the GPAC those those road tests are are 
are difficult and you've got to make sure you're ready to play. You know, every time you, you step on the field, you can't have an off week. And, and our guys do a really good job of just staying focused and, and really attacking the day and the task that's at hand. And I think that's something that makes our program and our guys special is you could easily look ahead to, you know, a big game against Morningside that, that looms in November, right? The second to last game of the year. And it'd be really easy to get lost in that or focused on that. But getting to that is, is just as important as that game. And our guys will do a really good job of going week to week. Um, we've got a couple really good early road games. Uh, we have to go to Midland and, and to Concordia. And just those road battles are tough. And you really got to be ready to play. Uh, we, week in and week out in our league, uh, we open our league play with Hastings and Coach Franzen's done an outstanding job as a head coach. Um, you know, Doan was a playoff team routinely when he was the head coach there, and now he's taken over at Hastings. And, and so you know you're gonna, they're going to be ready to play. And um, then the first half we have we finish with Doan and uh, Mount Marty before we have a bye week. And so getting through that first half of the season will will, will be a test for us. And week in and week out, we got to be ready to play our best. And, and I'm sure, as always, the, the target will be on your back as being one of those tough teams. And, and again, you are the, the national runners-up from the previous season. So ranked number two in the poll uh, that came out recently, the NAIA poll. And, and I don't have a vote in that, uh, that poll, Coach, but well, I'll tell you what, I, 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 I might even put you a little bit higher. I think you're coming back strong. So, But to, anyway, I'll, I'll let, I'll let the, the pollsters deal with that and you all deal with your schedule. Coach Matt McCarty with Northwestern, success to you all and to the Red Raiders here in 2021. We really appreciate you taking time for us today here on the Summit. And again, congratulations on a, on a great year coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for taking the time to visit with me.